Hello everyone, it's Brandon. Thank you for joining me again. This video is a little different, but I realized that I have so many pictures, actually a lot more pictures than I do video of the Vira, uh, thought, why not start compiling these into videos so that you can see them for yourself and you can you know, just take a moment to relax and just see some images that I thought were nice or that help tell the story of the house. In this particular video, I have about 20 pictures, 20 or 21, and uh, anything in particular that's interesting or to explain the, the picture, I'll share with you. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, English, English Vera Pix Volume 1. The very first picture here you'll see is me, you know, standing in front of the, the house in the snow and this is the very first time that I, I went out and to actually do some work in the house after I bought it and uh, by this time there was already some snow on the ground. I, I like this picture because <laughs> you, you can't see it here but right right after this I went into the house and I tried to shake the house because I was making a video and I was trying to shake the house and get the snow to come off and it wouldn't but another day when I went out there, I didn't try to shake it and it all just came sliding off. But in case you, you haven't realized this, it took several months to finalize all the paperwork, get everything together, and get the, uh, the scrivener and the owner and the agent all scheduled to meet me at the same time. It just so happens that the time he suggested was Christmas morning. So <laughs> Christmas morning of last year, 2021, is when I went and signed the papers and made the payment, finalized everything. The next image here, I thought you'd really like this one. I mentioned it before, and I'm glad that I can share it with you now. While cleaning through the house and going through stuff, I found some old photo albums, and I will show some of those photo albums with you later, but this particular picture is the earliest picture so far that I've found of the house. And you can see that it has the original thatched roof open and exposed on top that roof is still on the house it hasn't been removed it's just been built over with a frame and a copper roof on top i think it's pretty interesting because you can kind of see a little bit of a glimpse of life and and how it was there and what it used to look like before in the front there there, there weren't even rice fields, those were, there were, it looks like they were growing something else. If you look closely, you see the lady standing by the, the guest house, Kura. She's holding a baby. And I've seen her in some of the pictures, uh, some of the other pictures. And uh, there are a couple of kids to the right, and a uh, man on a horse. It's pretty, pretty interesting glimpse to look back into the past, right? This is the aerial picture that I showed you before, but this is a better image. I, I took a good picture of it so that you can actually see it. And what I did was I labeled each of these buildings and I'm going to kind of explain to you what part of the property is officially mine right now and what parts I'm, I'm uh, in the process of acquiring. Uh, let's look at them one at a time. Of course, right in the middle, you have the house, which is Cominca style. If you hear me say Cominca and you wonder what is that, well, this it's this particular style of house. There are different styles of old Japanese house, but th uh, this is a Cominca style. And then just to the right of that, you have the storehouse, which is the main Kura. And that one is two stories. It's de definitely the strongest. And, and the best and in the best shape to the right of that uh, you're gonna see or rather behind that you're gonna see the stable or barn and the that one I haven't even been able to really get into yet just gotten into the outside areas uh, and I can see inside that there's a lot of wood up in the rafters it's still all dry but I haven't been able to get in there because it's so grown up all around it uh, next to that behind the house is the bath and wash house. I call it the bath and wash house now because I, I thought about it. Well, they have a couple of washing machines out there plus the bathtub. So people went out there to wash themselves, but they also wash their clothes and stuff like that. To the right of the Kura is the tool work, uh, tool shed or work shed. And I, I was told by the agent that even though that was originally part of the land and the owner was 
this family. Technically, it doesn't belong to me right now. I don't know really why. But the funny thing is my neighbor came over the other day. If you see the road wrapping around to the right, it goes over to another house. And, and that, I have a neighbor who lives there. He came over the other day and I met him. And he actually said, that's not his. It, it should belong to me. It should belong to my land. And I said, well, the agent said it isn't. He laughed. He just said, well, it's it's yours. <laughs> so it's pretty interesting. The legal documents say that it's not mine, but he says it's yours. And he said there's junk in there too if i if i want it i can i can take it so pretty interesting the guest house is to the left the guest house or the second kura is uh, over on the left side that's one with the messed up roof that you saw that i showed you recently it looks so great the whole thing being in such good condition in the front of the house you can see those fields out there these these are where the rice paddies are right now but it looks like they were growing something else there because i don't see any water out there so it must have been growing something else and in behind the house you have field which is completely grown up right now with huge amounts of grass and small trees and things like that and then behind that is the tree line which is where the forest starts and it goes up the mountain from there this aerial photo if i remember correctly was taken in the early 1990s like 1990 1992 or somewhere in there if that's true it's kind of sad because this is basically the way the house looked just a few years before they moved out because it was abandoned around 1995 1996 so maybe the head of the family he died and then moved out sounds sad huh this next picture is just just for example for those of you who are interested in finding your own akia and buying it this one is located in hiroshima so if you notice the website i put it right in the middle in yellow akia-bank.fudosan.jp if you go to this address, you can look through to see what they have in the way of houses for rent or for sale and land for rent or for sale. It is in Japanese, so you'll have to use a translator. I just used Google to translate the whole page and it worked well enough for me. This is just one example for basically the Hiroshima area. So if you want to find something in this area, you can look here. But if you actually want to get more information about some of these places listed, then you're going to have to register with the actual Akia bank in that local city. Otherwise, they won't give you information about it. Let's move to the next one. Okay. Uh, this one here is an early picture of my Kominka before I started doing anything at all. And the reason you'll, you'll know that is because look at the front. You see all that old grass and weeds that are growing in the front? None of that's been cut down yet. So... This means that at this time, I hadn't started doing really anything in the house. So this is an early pic of when I had it. But I really like this pic because it was in the evening. The sun was going down. And like I told you, the sun goes goes down in the west on, the, on that side of the house. And it comes up on the other side of the house. So there's always a substantial amount of shade available. Very nice. And this picture here is the, the the next couple of pictures are some of the very first pictures I took of the house after I bought it and it was very dark inside so I took a longer exposure in order to brighten it up and I mean even this looks pretty cool but you can see how how dirty it is there's you know all sorts of junk on the floor and I mean it looks like oh there's not much to do you, there these rooms are empty uh, well <laughs> Yeah, in these two rooms, there wasn't much. There's the boots, Bootsadon over there in the corner. That has to be taken care of. But the room next to it that's closed off with the doors, it's completely full. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But what I like about this picture is it shows not only the character and the uh, basic design of the house, but it also shows some of the cool stuff that went into it. If you look at the top left of the screen, you can see part of the frame are solid full pieces of tree you know these logs complete logs so if you actually look at the frame of the house all the way around the house and all four on all four sides the frame is made up of these huge logs i just don't see how this house could easily be knocked down by anything not even an earthquake in this picture here it's taken from the same spot as the other picture with both of these pictures i was standing in the ginkan which is basically the 
the dirt floor where you enter from the sliding doors in the back of the house. You step in and you're still on, on the dirt before you step up onto the wood. And this room here is kind of what you would refer to as a living room. It is technically the irori room, but I'm going to save that for later. I've got uh, a video about that, so if you're interested, you can check that out. But the window that you see there, that's a view into the front of the house, and I know it's a little bright through the window, but you see the really old tree there. I was hoping that that tree was still alive because it's so old, and I was hoping it would bloom, but so far it hasn't done anything through the winter, the spring, the summer, it hasn't done anything yet. Let's see what happens in the fall. The next image here is another shot of the beautiful woodwork Mount Fuji that is between the, the room with the Butsudan and Actually, the, you can see the top of the Butsudan right there. It's, it's technically in this room, but it's facing the other room. Just, this woodwork is just beautiful, and I can't wait to see what it's going to look like once it has some fresh wax or oil or something like that applied to it. Beautiful. And just for your information, you see the wooden ceilings. The entire house has these wooden ceilings, and they're in pretty good shape. And that's one of the things I noticed that I really liked is I didn't see any water damage at all in any of these ceilings. And that's a good sign. It's a very good sign. But uh, over the over the kitchen and a couple of the other rooms, I plan to knock out the ceilings and do vaulted ceilings in there. There are a couple of reasons why. The first reason is because I think it will look nice. But the second reason is, and the main reason really, is that the kitchen is lower down on the ground. It's lower. And if I raise up the kitchen floor to match the rest of the house, then the ceilings will be... <laughs> From, from floor to ceiling, it will barely be a little over six feet tall, and that's ridiculous. So I've got to knock out the, those ceilings in order to raise it up and make it match the rest of the house. Another reason is because I'd like to add a loft upstairs above the rooms. I think it will be really cool to have such a thing. And of course, um, this is just me posing with something that I'd wanted to get for a long time, but I just kept putting it off. If you're going to teach... English in Japan. There are only a couple of ways you can do it and actually make decent money for a teacher. But working in the school, the regular school system, uh, working or working as an ALT, like an alt, an assistant language teacher, or working at an Aikaiwa, which is like an English training center, doing any of those, you're not going to make much money. It's going to be basically, if, if you're lucky, you can make $2,000 a month but most of these positions are not even going to pay that much. It'll be much less, maybe fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars a month. And so it's difficult to to have any extra money to burn or to use on even stuff like this, like a trimmer. This trimmer cost me less than one hundred and fifty dollars, but you know it took me some time to get it, and I was proud to get it. You can see the huge weeds in the background. Pretty crazy. Now let's take a look at some pictures. Uh, before and after. You'll notice <laughs> it's pretty overgrown here and of course this is still when there's a little bit of snow on the ground so it was pretty chilly, pretty chilly. But I felt like if I waited until everything turned green again and was growing it would be even more out of control so I decided to go ahead and start cutting and you can see the the after picture. I was able to get a lot done and of course if you look at one of my recent videos where I walk around like maybe the, the video with the Chinese couple who came out to get the scrap metal. You can see how all the grass has just really grown back. It's not as bad as it was before, but it's still a lot to do. It's still a lot to cut. This particular image here is just a, a front shot of the house. And there's some things that you won't know unless I point them out. But basically, there's there, there are limited places to park. So when people come to the house, they usually park right here on the side. But... All the dirt you see between the stone wall and the street, it used to have a lot of grass growing up there, and I cut all that down, or a lot of moss and stuff like that, and I just I shoveled a lot of it up. But if you notice right here, there's, there's a little cove inside the stone wall there. And in the old pictures that you look at of the house, if you go back in the video to the beginning and you look at the old pictures of the house, it looks like there was some kind of walkway or something there that went up to the house. And But now, this has water in it. If you look down in it, there's water. There's always water in it, whether it's a, it's been hot for, for weeks with no rain or whether it rains a lot, it doesn't matter. There's always water in there. And if you, if you stop and you look down in there, you can see some type of salamanders. 
that live in there. And one day I counted at least 20 that were in there. And I believe they might be fire salamanders. These, these are protected species, so you're not allowed to take them or keep them as pets. They used to be popular as pets and buying and selling, but not anymore. It's not allowed. They're protected. So I have a natural aquarium. So I guess you could say my house is not just a a cultural and historical place. It's also a natural place to, to visit. This particular picture here just shows after I open the side door. And it's a good example of what happens when a house is neglected and around the sides, the the mud, the dirt, the grass start to, to pile up and grow. And, and then whenever it rains, the, the water comes up all over the sill plate, which is that bottom piece of wood or what's left of it. <laughs> and it starts to rot that wood and affect the beams, the posts, and causes the mud wall to come apart and it needs to be replaced. It looks really bad, but it can be replaced. It's, it's not as bad as it looks. It just takes a little time to do it, but it's just one of those things that I'm gonna have to do. This is what I was talking about earlier, the, the main room before I actually went in and, and kind of dove in to to cleaning it up and organizing and going through and looking for stuff and I call it the katana room because that's where I found the katana. You can't even see the chest where I found the katana. It's in the far back left corner behind that big brown chest. But in this room I found several things of interest and it took me quite a while to go through everything. But all of those pillows, that's one of the things that are that's amazing. These pillows are what you put on the floor and you sit on them and I I think in the house there were almost 30 of these. And that's crazy because if there are almost 30 pillows for people to sit on, it makes me wonder how many visitors did they have? How many guests did they have over at one time? You know, it, it seems pretty crazy. In the back right corner hanging up on the white hook, if you can see that, there was a bag there. And when I took that bag down, it was filled with old coins and some paper money. In total, it was more than uh, $250 worth, but the coins that were in there, they are kind of rare coins. They're worth anywhere from like $5 up to $20 each. So that that was a good find. And I still have those coins. I'll show them to you in the video when I want to talk about the other treasures that I found. And here is an instant Polaroid camera that I found. It seemed to be in pretty good condition. It was, when one of, it was in one of the chests. So I decided to clean it up and give it a try. I got online on Amazon, I bought some film and I went out and took some pictures. You only get eight pictures with one one roll. So it's kind of expensive just for eight pictures. And you can see seven of the pictures I took here. I didn't put the, the eighth picture in here because number one, it was like a test picture. And two, it, it's of my Lamborghini model. It has nothing to do with the sites of Hiroshima, so I left it out of this picture. But you can see the shrine in the top left, the shrine near Hiroshima Castle, and then there are a couple of pictures of the castle, and there are a few of those. The train at the station in uh, Kaitaichi, and then a couple at the atomic bomb dome. They look retro, don't they? They look like they were taken a while back. Pretty cool. And I found, of course, I found quite a bit of stuff in the house. This is just one picture of some of the dolls that I found. This one is my favorite doll, but this is not the biggest and nicest looking doll. Like there's another doll that looks like it's more expensive and I'd be open to selling that one. Uh, but this one here, I, I'd like to keep. And of course there were several other things in the house, uh, such as art. I found several pieces of artwork, uh, a few different paintings. This is a medium sized painting. I found a large painting. I found many drawings, even a few wooden carvings, uh, and there's a self-portrait of the, the the man of the house. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I was told that he was an artist, but the agent told me that I'm not sure if he knows for sure, but someone in the house was an artist and I can find, or I have found rather, remnants of their stuff here and there all over the house. And that's pretty cool because this stuff I can use to redecorate as I finish cleaning. But right now, this particular painting is hanging up in my apartment. And this is a, a glimpse of the really cool custom made chest, futon chest. It's got some local 
images carved in of the Hiroshima area of a Itsukishima shrine. You can see the Tori Gate that's uh, on the top there. It's very lovely and beautiful. Uh, this kind of stuff is just really cool because it's so custom. It's local. You just can't beat it. You can't tell in this picture, but it's very deep. When you open it up, it's just huge on the inside, and it's perfect for storing blankets and futons and, and things like that. If, you, if you're if you thinking like the big chair that you sit in, that's not what I mean when I say futon. I, I, I mean the big blanket, the big thick blanket. That's that's what a futon is. I'm going to get this cleaned out and use it as to store blankets as it was meant to be. And of course, there's my main treasure, my favorite and best treasure I've ever found in my life, and that is the katana. I do have a special update about the, the katana. I will be making a video about that. But as a surprise, for those of you who watched until the end, I will tell you this. I did get a postcard just a few days ago from the city office notifying me of a future date when I need to bring the katana for the final registration process. Assuming all goes well, I'll be able to pay the money, register it in my name, and then keep it as an antique or an art piece, and it will be officially mine. Uh, so there we go. That's all I have for now, and I want to thank you very much for checking out the video and all of my other videos. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see in the house or if you have any questions about it, let me know. I'm definitely more than willing to take some pictures or video of something in particular that you're interested in. So feel free to send your requests or messages to me. Anyway, that's all for now. Much love. Bye-bye.